Hello guys, Sowers here with another video on the channel. This one is going to be a bit different to the other ones. It's kind of going to be me just kind of going on. And by the end of it, you'll probably be sick of my voice. But in the meantime, there is another gameplay against Millennium, who we seem to love playing because all I've uploaded right now is Millennium gameplays. So, yeah, I'm sure they're pretty mad with me right now. But it's a good gameplay. It gets better towards the end. So, hope you enjoy that in the background. A good team performance, I would say. Um, anyway, so like I said, this video, as you can tell by the title, is a bit more me just ranting. And I wanted to talk about the recent kind of influx of videos and, you know, the feeling that Call of Duty Esports is going to die and it's going to be, in a year's time, that Call of Duty will be dead and all this good stuff because of all these other games that are coming out. And so what I wanted to do is kind of talk about how things have gone in the past and how I think if certain things aren't implemented in the game, how I think things will go. Um, so it's going to be kind of a bit about Ghost, what I want to see in the future and what I think things will turn out like and what games might challenge the Call of Duty, like the esports community in general because I don't think Call of Duty will just die and that's it and the esports scene would die if that did happen which personally I don't think will happen and I'll go into why but it would move over to another game and I'll kind of go into which games I think might kind of take the, the realm if you like. Actually that was a crap word to ignore that but you know what I mean. Anyway, um, so... Call of Duty Esports, people are saying because Infinity Ward are putting these features in and the game modes are terrible that, you know, I kind of said in my last video that it needs things to keep the game fresh and keep going because at the moment, um, you know, my there was a Gfinity tournament last night with Blitzen and um, we lost to SK Game and my team that was, was doing it on a Blitz on Sovereign and I literally was sick for about three hours after because that's how bad that game was um, and so was my team so it was dreadful and it kind of made me think, you know what? If Blitz is played competitively, can this game really last? Because it really is. On some maps, it's not too bad. I'd say two maps I've played it on where I thought, hang on, this is bearable. Like, I I can pretty much, you know, play this without stabbing myself repeatedly. That's that's kind of the point I'm at with it. That it's bearable. But what's the point in playing a game type that's bearable? We want to be playing game types that are fun, good to watch, good to play. And so I can understand why people are making these videos... You know, Call of Duty Esports is going to die if these things don't come in. Because I played Blitz, you know, and I just thought to myself, what what is going on with this game type? And if it stays in the rules, you know, personally, I think it needs a lot of modifications, like I said in my last video. I won't go into that too much. But what I wanted to say here is that in the past, I've, you know, obviously I've been around since COD 4. So, you know, some of you might know that if you've been on my channel since then. It's about five years now. And there's always been games that have come and gone that have almost taken over the Call of Duty Esports scene because the scene used to be a lot smaller than what it is today. And when it was a lot smaller, it, mean, it meant that obviously it was a lot more fragile to being the community moving over. So I'll give you a few examples. Rainbow Six was one game which came in and all the top players started playing Rainbow Six for a few weeks. And so obviously it looked like Call of Duty was gone for a few weeks because everybody was playing this new game, Rainbow Six, Vegas 2... But then after a few weeks, everybody realised, hang on, you know, when we start playing Call of Duty again, this game is actually so much smoother, so much more competitive, um, and just better in general. So that was a game really where the hype of the new game meant that everybody started playing it. And eventually when the hype died down, you kind of have a more realistic view on the game. So you kind of, when a new game comes out, you play it, you think, oh, it's a new game, this is fun. But then after a few weeks, you get that hype dies down, so you look at it more realistically. And he kind of realised that Call of Duty was a better game. That's what happened. Then there was other games like Halo, for example, which was the main one which kind of a lot of players wanted to switch to, and that was me included. Um, Halo used to be huge. It was bigger than Call of Duty in the MLG days about three or four years ago. And when Halo Reach came out, that was one big title that almost, you know, kind of... If that was a really, really strong title, like as good as Halo 3 and Halo 2, I seriously do think Halo Reach could have taken a lot of Call of Duty players... I myself moved over, a lot of people that I was teamed with at the time moved over to Halo Reach, I made a team on it, with some players that still play Halo today as well, that I was playing with, and so obviously the Halo community is still going, but Halo Reach definitely was a massive failure in terms of a com being a competitive title because of many things, like the maps all looking exactly the same for one, which just got terribly boring from what I heard. But that was another case where people moved over for a few weeks, <clears throat> people tried out, and then we went, <coughs> went back to Call of Duty. And realised, hang on, the COD's actually, you know, a really good game. And um, the thing with military shooters is they're always going to be massively popular as well, you know. Like, Halo, it's got a big fan base, but Call of Duty is, you know, pretty much the biggest game in the world, right? With GTA. So there's always going to be 
people there <laughs> coming through into the scene. Whereas Halo didn't really have that, and that's I think that's probably why it died off. But that's one thing with Call of Duty that's it's always going to have over a lot of these games is it's got a, such a huge fan base and such a huge amount of players that there's always resource, resources for people to kind of come into the esports scene. So that's one reason why Call of Duty, I think, will probably survive this whole thing, even if Infinity Ward don't update the game. But my point is, from those past titles, is that unless the titles that I'm going to talk about in a minute are as smooth as COD, as good to play, you know, in terms of consistent online, good maps, good game modes. I mean, let's go through a few of the titles here, right? So there's Titanfall. In fact, no, let's be honest, it's pretty much Titanfall that we're looking at right now. If Titanfall comes out in March and Call of Duty Ghost is exactly the same game as it is right now, then I think Titanfall has a really strong chance of taking over the COD community. Because there's no way I think we can play Domination and Destiny only for a year. And it's not as good to watch as Black Ops 2. Don't get me wrong, I really love Ghost. The way it feels, the way you know, the guns are and, and stuff like that. I actually really enjoy playing it. But without the right game modes, it's not competitive. And I honestly think that if game modes are not added by Infinity Ward and Titanfall releases, and it, and from what I've heard, Titanfall is just as smooth as COD, just as fast-paced, if not more fun. It kind of takes the best out of Halo, COD, and Battlefield, so I'm told. And if Titanfall really does live up to that hype, because don't forget it's made, up by the, it's made by the Call of Duty 4 developers as well, which is another good sign, because they kept things simple, didn't overcomplicate things, and they obviously made one of the best, probably, you know, the best Call of Duty, in my opinion, the best Call of Duty um, that I've played. So, it's going to be a lot of factors down to whether esports does survive for Call of Duty. I think if they add hardpoint to CTF, 100% Call of Duty esports, in my opinion, will be stronger than ever. It'll grow and it'll keep growing. Um, if game modes aren't added by Infinity Ward, I think that's the only time where Titanfall has a chance to take over the whole scene. Because these new games, they always come about, and if Call of Duty is a strong title, it always lives through, you know, new titles that, that do come through. And I think if Hardpoint and, you know, other gamers, like I say, are added and a few fixes are put in, um, everybody will play Titanfall on March and everybody will be playing it for a few weeks. Like, this game's amazing, I've got a jetpack, that kind of good stuff. And everybody will be on a high about it. And then after a few weeks, people will go back to COD, realise, you know, if there's Hardpoint and stuff like that, people, I think, will then have a more, you know... Um, fair view of whether Call of Duty, you know, is still a good competitive title, and I think with Hardpoint and CTF, this game will be. Um, so, to wrap it up, basically, I think this all comes down to Infinity Ward, and I've made tweets about Infinity Ward, and a lot of people have, that they, ever since COD 4, they've always said they're going to do things for the scene, and we're going to update the game. Monolith 3 was a tip, you know, kind of example where they said they'd had land lobbies at the start of the game, and it eventually came when Black Ops 2 was released, I believe, which was brilliant, because obviously that's when we need land lobbies, you know, like when the game's finished and nobody's playing it. So it doesn't really make sense to me with some of the things that Infinity Ward do. Not only that, but the map things that people have been going on about. How lazy can you get, you know, when it comes to designing maps? Look at this map I'm playing right now. <laughs> this is one of the maps that is basically done. And they're basically, what they've done is they've not said this is a remake of Durham. They've tilted the map around, copied the exact same design to save time of trying to design a new map that will work. And are there, are there flags for domination in exactly the same spots? I think they are as well, which that's just even more stupid. And so basically what they've done is been lazy. They've tried to save time, and they've done it with the um, campaign as well, supposedly. So these are all signs for me that Infinity Ward cannot be trusted at the moment. And I, I'm not holding my breath on these updates to come. Yes, they updated SMD, and the thing with updating SMD is that all they had to do was do a few little things to put a longer timer in, and a few other things like that. But adding a whole new game mode and a whole new spawn system, that's one thing that takes effort, and effort for the communities, which doesn't get Infinity Ward any more money. And effort, you know, with Infinity Ward, from what I've seen, if it doesn't involve money, then they're not bothered. SMD, their update probably took one person to do in a few hours. So, to add new game types, for me, is the key here. If they add the hardpoint and CTF back with proper spawns, not just some, you know, put a few hardpoints on the map and just a few spawns. If they add things properly and add CTF with proper spawns and put a bit of effort into it and a bit of time to kind of support the communities like eSports, which is Treyarch and Activision have been building up for this last year. So, I don't, 
surely they're on their backs as well, thinking, what the hell are Infinity War doing here, you know? Because I'm telling you now, you know, that if they don't add game types, I think Titanfall could take over Call of Duty, and they probably don't realise it. But if game types are added, I think Call of Duty will be fine. So, it's on Infinity Ward's hands, guys. I think that's what it is. I think if Infinity Ward sort it out and add Hardpoint and CTF, everybody will go play Titanfall and these other games that come out on the Xbox One, but they will come back to Call of Duty because it's got the fan base, which is absolutely number one. You know, you need a lot of public players to come into the scene, otherwise it's not going to grow. Titanfall's a new title. It's not going to have... There's no way it's going to, you know, have the amount of fans that Call of Duty has straight from the start. So... Even if we did all move over to that game, there's no doubt that it's going to take a good year or two to kind of build it up in terms of getting a lot of viewership numbers and things like that. But in general, I think I just wanted to kind of give my opinions on it because I don't think it's all as bad as what people are saying. I think for a few months this game will be bearable to play. But Infinity Ward, if they don't add certain things to the game, then I really do fear for Call of Duty and that's not a bad thing, you know. I'm really looking forward to Titanfall. And I really hope it's as smooth and as as well built as Call of Duty is, because that's the one thing that Call of Duty has as a, over every other game is that how smooth it is, how well built it is, and you play you know Battlefield and Rainbow, and they're just not the same as Call of Duty. They look the same, you know, when you're watching a game, but when it's in your hands, the control, and you play it, you know, it's so smooth compared to every other game. So I hope Titanfall has that, and if it does, I seriously think it could be an amazing title, and. We'll see. Um, if Infinity Ward don't sort their act out, then Activision and Treyarch will be majorly disappointed when they see the whole scene move over to Timefall. I really do think that's what could happen if the game types are added. But if the game types are added, I think Call of Duty will stay strong and will dominate for this year. And then obviously it will go back into the hands of Treyarch, who will no doubt put a lot of effort into the scene. Uh, David Von Der is a god, so no doubt he will save us all. Anyway, if you guys listened to this whole video, I really appreciate that. I kind of rambled on, but I just wanted to drop my thoughts there because... You know, I've obviously been in the scene for a while now, and I've seen a lot of these kind of things happen in the past. And, yeah, so hopefully you guys found that insightful. And if you guys enjoyed the video, please drop a like, comment on what you think below on the things that I've discussed. And, um, yeah, I'll be doing some team listenings on the channel as well once we announce our fourth, which should be pretty soon. And some other content as well, so... I will be trying to upload every two days at least. I've tried to do that since the Ghost release. And a lot of people have been tweeting me saying, oh yeah, good job on getting constant uploads up. So let me know if you like this kind of video. I know this has been a long one. And I want to know if you want me to do more like topical debates like this. And maybe answer some questions as videos. Like a question and answer video. But like one question where I kind of go in depth on it. Anyway, I'll shut up now and let you guys get off. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time guys. Take it easy.